Hey folks, Stay Hector from The Six here. We are at the 2024 Florida RV Super Show here in Tampa Bay. And I'm happy to have with us Kathy Chamberlain and Ben Matthews. They are the creators of the Barefoot Camper, which is a camper that fits right into our wheelhouse. It's a really neat, lightweight, small camper, uh, fiberglass shell, very impervious to water. Just a really cool uh, trailer. And we have the opportunity to talk to the folks that created it, which I think is awesome. So maybe what we'll do is we could start maybe with Kathleen. You could just tell us sort of what your role is, in, you know, in Barefoot, and then Ben, you could do this. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, sure. So um, Ben and I, we, it was a joint, very much a joint venture. We created Barefoot the Caravans together in the UK. I had the idea after a wet weekend tent camping. So I love the outdoors, but just wanted a bit more luxury and a bit more, you know. For, protection from the weather as well and somewhere that would feel really comfortable and cozy and I could have a warm shower at the end of a day outdoors so this, this is why I designed it it started off with a wet weekend camping um, and yeah it's gone from there and uh, we created it in the UK we first launched in 2015 and since then got so many inquiries from all around the world but particularly America that we decided we should bring it to you as well. So, um, and Canada actually. So um, New Camp, who we've now partnered up with, uh, have uh, dealers in both North America, yeah, in America and Canada. Excellent. Um, yeah. Cool. And Ben, maybe you can talk about your role as well. Yeah, so uh, I own a company that manufactures uh, motorcycle sidecars, which we've been doing for 112 years. And uh, Cathy approached us about 10 years ago, looking for a manufacturer that was in uh, got some experience with fiberglass and steel chassis and we were really interested in the concept so we set up barefoot caravans between us and created this amazing unique caravan so you you had a wet weekend camping and i think we had a very similar experience so we we okay. moved from the tent to a trailer that's somewhat similar to this yeah and but i'm wondering you know we just went and found one that we liked so <laughs> that's what most people would do <laughs> So how did we go from sort of maybe looking at trailers and then deciding, I'm going to build my own? <laughs> I'm quite a determined person, I suppose. I don't know what I like. Yeah, I just couldn't see, see the sort of thing that I like to find the others too boxy, straight sides. Um, I wanted something I could park up on my drive and tow and feel proud to own. I mean, they, you know, lots of them look great on the inside. So many of them don't look great on the outside. And it's both really, and I wanted a kind of a home from home. So the extra features that we've got in ours and the barefoot, it's, you know, it's got nice light walls. It's got solid oak tops or uh, in the new one, I think they're maple tops, but you know, the sort of touches that you might have in your own home. And that's what I wanted to take away with me rather than something that was a bit cheap and the cupboards felt flimsy. It feels solid. It feels like something that you, you know, and that, you're proud to own it and it will last for years and that's important as well you know we all need to think about the environment and you're no building something that's only going to last a short time so these with the fiberglass body will go on and on and on that, that's that feels good too yeah so in the uk is is it atypical to have a trailer that kind of has all the comforts of home so you've got a, a wet bath in here you've got a shower uh you've got a you know kitchenette that's got a stove it's got a sink is that mm. not the norm in the uk or there are, there are plenty of, we call them caravans in the UK, yeah, there are plenty of caravans like that, but they're usually a lot bigger and they're square. Um, and I like to go touring, I like to go to the coast, I like to go you know, around Scotland or around the, um, the south coast of England and Wales. And they're on narrow roads and little windy roads and you want to be able to go off, off grid a bit and you want to be able to park up and you know, go and enjoy some scenery without worrying about towing a great big thing behind you that you're not sure if you're going to get stuck with you know so I can handle this on my own I go with my kids I go with friends but it's really all about you know just being able to it's called barefoot deliberately yeah. get up and go barefoot you can just you know get off and go and have an adventure with it yeah yeah and that's no, the idea it's interesting that you say that because that's really exactly why we went with a lightweight trailer as well it just makes it so much easier so much less stressful if we only yeah. have it for a weekend it's just sitting in the driveway off yes, you go. I think that's important as well, something that you can park on the driveway at home. This will fit in a size of a car parking space. The bigger ones, people are having to store them at another site and then they've got to collect them and yeah, all of that. You, you understand all of this, you know. <laughs> now, I know, yeah. what I also know though is that to, to get something like this to weigh 2,000 pounds with all of those features, um, you're going to have to 
makes some really intentional design decisions. And I was wondering, Ben, because I know you're more on the technical side of this, yeah. if you could talk about some of those decisions you've made to keep the weight down, uh, to have this beautiful styling with all of these incredible curves, which I don't imagine were easy to, to mold. No, no, we have created a, a challenge for ourselves. Um, but one of, the, one of the things we originally set on was that it was going to be a one-piece fiberglass mold. So that, from the very start, was, was the challenge that we, we gave ourselves. And that really is to give us a completely waterproof body shell. There's no seams in it. There's no panels that are joined together. It is molded in, in one piece. Um, so it's really unique. Uh, it looks like an egg. The, the shape of it gives it its, its strength. So if you, if you imagine an egg, they're really, they're really hard. So we don't need a frame inside it. So it is a, a nice curved, uh, strong, waterproof fiberglass shell. And then we put a lot of attention to detail inside, making sure we used every inch of space so we spent ages trying to work out how we can put stuff in this little corner or that corner. So when you step inside, you'll see that there's not a bit of space that's wasted. And we use lightweight wood inside to, to make sure the furniture's uh, lightweight to keep the weight down. Um, but there's, there's loads of air and space inside it. So they feel really, really big when you get inside, although it looks small from the outside. Yeah, it's very open inside. So compared to our trailer, that most trailers, they'll have a kitchen and a bathroom in the middle right yeah and then you maybe have a bed on one side and then a dinette on the other so with the bathroom at the very front of the trailer and then the kitchen just in the corner you've left the entire trailer wide open which i think that really helps it does not feel anywhere near as small as it looks on the outside no. That's right. we yeah. didn't really realize that was a thing we, we, it was quite interesting because we've not designed a caravan before so we just designed one the way we thought it would work and we didn't really look too closely at what everyone else was doing and then we've had lots of comments about the bathroom being at the back yeah but yeah, it, it, it obviously works and it just fitted the space. It was the best use of the space really for us, yeah. So maybe we'll step inside. Yeah, sure. Come on, come inside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come in. <laughs> so, <clears throat> yeah, we've got the kitchen here. So a nice size sink and a hob for cooking. As a fridge. A fridge with a little uh, ice rack as well, so you can have some ice for your gin and tonics. And utensils, and there's lots of cubby holes. I won't take you through all the cubby holes, but lots and lots of cubby holes uh, as, on your way in as well. With There's a wardrobe. Um, sorry, I should have given you, shown you this bit first. And the table's just so neatly stored in the, in the back of the wardrobe as well. But all of these cubby holes are useful, the shoes at the bottom of there. So that's a real example of using the space. Yeah, and all the curves. It was also really important to us to keep the curves inside the caravan. So you'll see everything's curved, every edge, every cubby hole, you know, so that was important to us, yeah, but we've made a good use of the space. There's a couple of cupboards at the back of the bathroom as well. And more here, There's things like this, this cupboard here is just so useful for mugs and glasses. You'll know that when you're towing, everything bounce, jumps around. So it's really useful to have smaller spaces as well that you can put things in, keep them tight together, and then everything arrives in perfect order, which is great. Um, I think one of my favorite things about the caravan is just the lounge area here. And it's just so relaxing. You're gonna join me. Sure. For me, the whole idea of going Camping is being in the outdoors, where even when you're not outside, you want to be able to looking at it, you know, and you can have some fantastic views um, from your from your windows, you know, see, see, see the world go by. You can even see the stars, actually, when you look out through this window at night. And this can appeal also to people who, you know, have lost some mobility and still want to be outside. So, of course, it's fabulous for all, you know, all of us who want to go hiking, but those that can't can still go and enjoy the countryside. And that, that's something that we found, you know, we've got a real range of, um, of owners of our caravans from triathletes right through to people who just want to have a more, more relaxing holiday, yeah. So that actually segues nicely. I wanted to ask you, what is the RV culture like in Britain? Like what is a typical British RVer as we call them, I guess caravaner as you guys call them? Yeah. What would they use it for? I mean, I'm not seeing the, I don't know if Britain has the big national parks like we have in North America. Mm -hmm. or, so maybe you could just describe that. Yeah. Or even how you would use the trailer. Yeah, well, we're, yeah, ours is, I suppose, a bit different. We're an island with a huge coastline, aren't we? So there is a lot to do around the coast of Britain and Scotland as well. In particular, it's beautiful. Um, so, yeah, lots of people go to the coast. Um, and there are sites by the coast and you can walk down and you're on a beach. Yeah, so that's lovely. 
And then also we have obviously lakes and mountains as well. Um, I particularly like using these for music festivals as well. So Glastonbury is my favourite. And um, yeah, so I mean, it, it is perfect for that. There's no, virtually no facilities there, you know. So to be able to have a warm shower and just get clean and spend your, you know, the first few hours of the morning regrouping from the night before, <laughs> having a couple of coffees. <laughs> and I'm assuming maybe camping at Glastonbury, it's kind of like a big empty field and everybody just tents and trailers and everything else. Yeah, well, the tents are all in the middle. I mean, there's 250,000 people there. It's huge. Yeah. And then you, you have your caravan or your camper van sort of a mile away, but it's still on the site. It's huge, absolutely huge. And it's exhausting. Yeah. So it is so nice to have a comfortable space to stay. So I couldn't go there and camp. I mean, you, you get virtually no sleep, I think. But um, yeah, I like my sleep. So this, and, the, and actually, the, it's fully insulated, but really soundproof as well, actually, this. So we've, uh, it's been tried and tested, yeah. <laughs> so even on a noisy festival site, it's, uh, it's nice. But yeah, but the, back to the caravans, the demographics changing. It used to be older people now. Uh, it's you know, appealing to younger people and the caravans like the barefoot are really changing the scene as well, yeah. Okay, so we're back outside the barefoot now and just had a couple more questions. So I'm wondering what was the biggest challenge in getting this very unique design from an idea which I think was on a napkin originally. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> um, to, you know, now you're, you're expanding into North America. I mean, and been here for about a year already. Yeah. Um, the biggest challenge. I think one with creating this amazing shape, shape was the was a big challenge. It was made of clay originally and then built up, uh, but then also trying to find components that would would fit with it. So windows that because there's so many regulations and people want to have you know obviously everything has to be safe and has to be solid. So uh, finding the right components to fit within the design, like the windows and the um, the handles on the back and the lights and everything. So there were bits designed into it along the way as well. Yeah. Um, um, from the, the designing the structure yeah. point of view. Yeah, so so we got the shape right, but but um, as with fiberglass, it's understanding all of the, the lines so you can extract the body from the mold. So you've got to make sure that those are all, all right. So we had some really good partners in the fiberglass side. Um, and just making it look like it just sort of oozed quality when, when, you, when you stand back and look at it. So not only is it a really unique shape and construction, it just makes people smile when they look at it. And that's, mm -hmm. that's all part of the, yeah. the whole package. For sure. And Kathy, were you in business before you started this business? Or I'm yeah. imagining that the entrepreneurial side of it might have been challenging as well. Yeah, no, yeah, it was not connected at all, actually, with what I'd done previously. I, I hate to say this in America because they have an even worse connotation, but I was a lawyer. I was an employee, a labor lawyer, um, and then changed, yeah. Um, so no, it's, you know, it, it was it a was completely different, different project, but I've got a lot of tenacity. You need a lot of tenacity. Anyone can come up with an idea. We've, I've realized this. I have lots of people approaching us with ideas. Virtually anyone can come up with an idea, but driving that through to the end result is a completely different thing. And um, I've been really lucky to meet up with Ben, and we have an older uh, uh, business partner, Mike, as well, who's now retired, who had years and years of engineering experience. Yeah. And the three of us, we spent... This has been a, a labour of love and a lot yeah. of blood, sweat and tears, but it, it's really worth it, yeah. I want to thank you guys for coming all the way across the pond and, and showing <laughs> us this trailer. And, you know, it's really exciting to have it here in North America. And I guess my last question is, do you have any advice? So we're, this is sort of an entrepreneurial venture for us to this YouTube channel and uh, we're just starting out. Do you have any entrepreneurial advice for, for somebody who's starting out and uh, what it takes to, to grow something from something small to something big like this? Yeah. I think um, you've got to do it because you love it. So that's, that's that. And if that if that's really the case, then that shines through and that, you know, so obviously you love what you're doing and I think that's going to be really important. But yeah, just keep going. Yeah. Everything takes longer than you think. Yeah. Twice as long, three times <laughs> as long, maybe. If you believe in what you're doing and believe that you, you can do it, just keep doing it and you'll get there, um, which is what we did. You know, we, we believed it was the right thing to do, but some stage you question it. And, <laughs> yeah. But just keep going. And, and if you think that's what's the, the right thing to do, you will get there. Perfect. Well, we really appreciate you guys taking the time to talk. Thanks for coming to see us. And thanks for bringing this amazing trailer over to North America because uh, we need more of those. We've got a, a lot of really big, heavy ones and not yeah. much that yeah. are yeah. towable and really cool looking like this. Oh, well, we're delighted to be here. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. Good luck with your project. Thank you. Yes, good luck.